Hi. It's hard to see me. But, oh, you can see me. Yay. Okay, so I'm inside my tent. This is day one at the uh, Feast of Tabernacle. So, I, I'm inside the tent. I don't know if you can see. You can't see anything. So you look around. This is the tent. This is my bed. Can you see? No, nope, you can't really see. But I'm inside my tent. This is Feast of Tabernacle Day 1. And, um, I love it. <laughs> I don't know why. I had to go to great lengths to set up my tent today. Because I didn't really prepare like I should have. And I waited to the last minute. And I usually go on top of my roof. And, um... Let's see. I usually go on top of my roof. And, um, but my landlord left and the door was locked on the roof. So I had to come and sleep outside in the courtyard. So, um, I just want to document it. And, um, you know, I just was thinking for the last couple of days about how important. I was thinking about our forefathers. And I was thinking about Cain and Abel. Oh gosh, my light went out. I was thinking about Cain and Abel. And how Abel gave, a, you know, a, the kind of sacrifice that the Most High required. And how Cain didn't. You know, he gave what he wanted to give, right? And it just made me think how important it is, like when we do our sacrificing... Even though we're not under the law where we're practicing, but we still, you know, have to keep the uh, commandments. So, it just made me think of how, you know, we don't, we want all the blessings and we want, you know, the Most High to love us and take care of us like he did our forefathers, the ones who were in favor, you know, and, you know, but yet, when it comes to our sacrifices, meaning our off our offerings, like when say this feast day, like some people don't like to sleep out. They don't like to take the initiative to, you know, take get a tent and you know sleep out. It's inconvenient. You gotta, you know, do all this stuff. And I had to go to great lengths. Kind of inconvenient to a few people <laughs> to to do this out here because I didn't prepare the way I should have. But, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm put forth the effort because I could have re- easily went back upstairs and said, oh, forget it, and went in the house and just said, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. But I really wanted to put the effort in, in it because, you know, and it made me think about how Cain and Abel, like Abel gave the sacrifice the Most High told him to give. And Cain gave what he wanted to give and it wasn't pleasing to the Most High. So, he, but and then he got vexed and mad and jealous at Abel because he, you know, the Most High favored his his sacrifices offering, and it just brought me to mind of how we do things. You know, we could say, "Oh, I'm under grace. I don't have to really do it." You know, and give you know a, a offering or a sacrifice to the Most High that we feel is acceptable. But the Most High put it in the law what He felt, He what He wanted us to do. You know, whether it's dwelling tents, whether it's, you know, eating unleavened bread on Passover, or, you know, or whatever. You know, we can make excuses of why we can't do it and say, oh, I'm under grace. But then when the sacrifice or the offering, just because these are like our offerings, is not good enough to the Most High, we see it in our blessings. You know, the Most High... He don't give us, you know, our gifts. You don't see the gifts that you want to see. You're not able to um, perceive things. You don't have wisdom. You don't get understanding from the scriptures. You can't um, see prophecies or, you know, the different things that gifts that the Most High said we we would have. The fruits of the Spirit. You know, those are gifts and blessings and 
you know, get upset. People get upset when they can't, you know, when they're not discerning wisely or they don't they don't see the gifts or they may see gifts on other people. They become jealous. They get mad. They want to, you know, just, it's just amazing to me. And it, the Bible is so true. And the Most High is the same Most High he was back in the the Bible. You know, he chose to love who he chose to love, but he loved those who love him. He had favor for those who usually keep his commandments, who, you know, who honor and worship him the way he tells them to. Like our forefather Noah, our forefather Abraham, Abel, with his, you know, the way he gave sacrifices, you know, Jacob. All of the forefathers who had favor that he called just and upright, and he f he gave blessings to them because of you know Enoch and um, you know Noah especially. He had favor on Noah. He had favor on Enoch, and you know of course Christ. He loved Christ, but you know I'm just saying that you know we read in the scriptures of how he favored. And took care of those who kept his commandments. Who did what he told him to do. So I just really wanted to say this to you all. You know about keeping the sacrifices and the offerings. And our feast days and holy days according to the Bible. Because with that the blessings come. And the more you give to the most high. The more he gives to you. And you know it's, it's twofold. So you can't. You not get upset or when you don't see things in your life so you may see it on another person and all of a sudden you don't like this person you just you know because you know you see the gifts or you're not discerning or you can't do this or you can't do this you have to look at yourself and what you how are you offering what you're offering to the most high what are you giving to the most high are you sacrificing the way he asks you to? Are you giving excuses like grace and, oh, that was in the old times? And, you know, all these reasonings why you can't do what the Most High asks you to do. Even if it, when it comes to leaving America, excuses of why you can't leave America, why you haven't left yet. If you've been in this truth for a year or two and you still haven't left or, you know, making preparations to leave, you know. It says a lot. And, you know, a lot of people don't want to hear somebody say this because everybody have their reasons for why they do what they do. And it always sounds like a good excuse, but we have to look at our forefathers and look at the favor in the lives of the ones who were blessed by the Most High and what they did and the examples that the Bible gives us. So I just wanted to just put that out there, give some food for thought, you know. It's not always what people want to hear most of the time, but I, this is what brought me to mind when it comes to, especially the Feast of Tabernacle, because it seems like that's the last feast. That's the one feast day that nobody wants to appear to. You know, they don't want to do it. You know, they always got excuses, you know, we under grace and you know, we don't have to do this, and just all kind of excuses of why we can't keep the laws according to how the Most High said keep them. So, I just want to say bless you for all those who, um, who are sleeping out. Have an awesome, blessed evening, because the Most High sanctified these days. And I think there's something spiritually attached to when you sleep out in the open air, when you actually sleep out. I believe that the Most High put a blessing on the evenings of this um, tabernacle, Feast of Tabernacle. And I just feel like, you know, it, He opened up my understanding once I started doing it even more. The more I can see, the more I can hear from Him. And I just wanted to give that to other brothers and sisters and encourage you. To keep the holy days as he tells us to keep. Don't make excuses. Because when you're in the wilderness, you won't be able to do it. And I know eventually we, you know, those who will come out will be in the wilderness doing it. 
But a lot of people, even though they were in the wilderness, they didn't make it through. They didn't make it. You know, we're still going to be tried and tested even in the wilderness. So, it depends on where you are in the spirit. Like, if you're not obedient now to keeping the laws, you know, when you know the laws, you say, oh, okay, I'll wait till I'm in the wilderness. Oh, I'll wait till this. I don't think that's the right spirit to be in. You know, because then you'll have an excuse when you're in the wilderness. Why you can't do this and why you can't do that. And and you don't want to be be the one eating the swine flesh behind the tree, you know. Because it's all spiritual. It starts with your obedience from the beginning. So, I want to say Shabbat Shalom. Have a blessed Feast of Tabernacle. And this is my day one. And I'll try to do... Um, day, you know, up until day seven or day eight, you know, and, um, but they'll, it, they'll be much shorter than this. <laughs> okay, so have a blessed night, and I'll say Shabbat Shalom. Okay, guys, here's my tent. I'm outside. And I'm on, on the roof of my building, so it's not really comfortable. But it's small, but I got my tent up, and it's the Feast of Tabernacles. I had to put a little rug down. But, um, this is it. I'm going to keep the Holy Days, Feast of Tabernacles. For all of you guys who are out in the tents, bless you, and for all of you who couldn't do it this year, I pray for you that you can do it and get out there next year because um, I definitely believe this um, spiritual blessings attached when we keep the holy days when we sleep out among the stars, the most high sanctify his days his, he blessed his holy days and if we keep them we definitely participate in the spiritual blessing of the most high so I say all glory and praise to Ahaya Bahashim Yeshaya. And uh, I hope you had a blessed Feast of Trumpets and a blessed Day of Atonement where we fast. And um, I say all Shabbat Shalom.